Uh, for the next 10 minutes, what I will be doing is talking about um, achieving direct growth through personalization. Um, and before I dive in, let's get a little bit of a status check. How many people are using Netflix? Okay, okay, interesting. Last, yesterday I got everyone's hands, but there's a few people that didn't raise their hands, which is surprising. Um, how many people are using Spotify? Okay, almost everybody as well. So obviously this is not very much related to hospitality, but there is a lot of links uh, between Netflix, Spotify, Amazon. And one of the links that we are seeing with hospitality is through personalization. So I don't know how much you know about Netflix apart from it being a streaming channel, but they have they analyze through artificial intelligence millions of different touch points on how you're viewing a different show, how many seconds or minutes or hours you spend viewing that show, how many times you stop between that show, uh, at what part did you stop, was it one of the lows in the movie, one of the highs, and so on. And this allows them to not only uh, create really amazing Netflix series, if you've ever seen ones that they develop, they're usually, you just sit down and watch them like crazy. I don't know if anyone's seen Emily in Paris, but I can watch that in one go, which is not even the style of shows that I really like. But on a Sunday after a big hangover, it's probably the perfect thing to watch. Um, but Stranger Things, and that's what's on the screen right now. And why are you seeing nine different examples of Stranger Things? Well, one of the other things that Netflix does in order to also engage you in content is they personalize how you're going to view that content before you even start watching it. So if you have a past history of watching romantic comedies, then this might be the title of Stranger Things that you'll see on your Netflix versus the person next to you who maybe fancies horror movies might see this kind of um, title to Stranger Things. So everything from the how they curate the content to how they develop the content is analyzed and is personalized to you. Spotify does the same, but with your playlist. They allow you to not only create your own playlist, but they also recommend music that you should be listening to based on your past. So, well, my next question is, how many people do know the Hotels Network? Okay, cool, great. So a little bit about the Hotels Network. What we're doing is very similar to what we're seeing in other spaces like e-commerce, uh, very similar to streaming sites. Uh, Amazon is excellent at providing recommendations and a more personalized experience. Hospitality is typically a little slower than other industries when it comes to adapting new technology. So what we've done is we've seen what Booking.com is doing really well, Expedia with a lot of their urgency messages, um, what Netflix is doing with a more personalized experience, and we're doing the same for hotels. So we're analyzing the data on your website in order to provide a more personalized experience for your users. So if you know that typically every user that arrives to your hotel is very different from the next, the same thing happens with the people who arrive on your website. So we're um, within the product stack because I think it's really good to understand this and we're seeing a lot of different um, companies talking today. We fall into a new category. It layers on top of your website and booking engine experience. We're not a booking engine. We're not a website provider. We're not a PMS or a reputation management company. We're in our own little segment called direct growth, and we're currently leading that space. So when it comes to personalization, it's quite a hot topic at the moment. Uh, many companies are using it and, and throwing it around. But what we're doing and what we have done for the last six years, or at least I've done it for the last six years, I think the company's been around for seven, uh, is focusing on personalization within the direct booking um, channel. So that's everything related to the homepage and booking engine experience. And the way that we do that is we target based on a number of different variables depending on how the user is behaving on your website and what they're doing, how they're searching, with how many people they're searching, where they're coming from, whether they paid to arrive or whether you paid for them to arrive on your website, whether they came there organically, whether they're a loyalty member. There's so many different factors um, that when a user arrives, you can start to really cater the experience that you want them to go on. And that depends on over 30 different targeting capabilities, and there's some that even apply artificial intelligence if you want to really streamline the process. And for, I'm just going to show you some really good practical use cases, uh, mostly from uh, the Nordics, because that's what I specialize in. Uh, here's a really great example from Bank Hotel. Uh, they are seeing with their Gen Z a lot more people coming from Ecosia, is um, uh, eco 
ecological uh, search engine. Uh, so what they do is when they see that people are coming from this specific traffic source, it means that they're more um, eco-friendly and, and paying attention to sustainability. So they personalize the experience from the moment the guest arrives to relate everything about their hotel to sustainability because that's really important to that user. So without having to recode or change any of your tech stack, what you can do is you can just personalize the content from the moment the guest arrives with these little messages that help to guide the user to choose your location over the hotel next to you or the, well, definitely the OTAs. So here's one example from Bank Hotel. Another great way if someone's returning to your website, this is another way to personalize the experience. This person has already been on your website, but they didn't complete the reservation. Okay, well, maybe they had to go check the OTAs, maybe they had to go check your competitors. People don't typically book on the first experience. It's about eight or nine, nine, um, nine times in. But if they're returning, maybe you want to highlight some of the benefits about your property because people typically read about 25% of your website. So you dedicate all this time to putting all this information about all these amazing packages, but not all these packages relate to you know, what the person is looking for. So what we do, and this is a great example from one of the Nordic hotels and resort properties um, up in Norway, in Helsinki, is that when they um, see returning visitors, they highlight how conveniently located their hotel is, which sometimes you can't find on your website. You have to go to Google. Then Google is a meta, they get stuck there, they start checking prices, and then you know, they go on a journey that maybe you want to move away from. Speaking of meta, Elite Hotels of Sweden has done something really well. They personalize the whole journey that's coming from their paid acquisition. So because the user has arrived on their website and they paid for that user, they customize the journey to be a little bit more catered towards um, motivating them to book, whether it's through discounts or certain benefits that other members who might come direct uh, won't see. Uh, and they, they, what they did is, this was a two-month trial. Um, there's a case study on it. It's on our website if you want to have a read. Also not boring. Um, and here we had a 65% uplift when you personalize the journey for your paid acquisition. Another part, and what, the way I've structured this is from home page, and then we'll go into the booking engine, because I think there's a lot that you can do with the booking engine. In the home page, typically some points of information that you have on the users, where they're coming from, like the source, what location they're coming from. So are they coming to my hotel in Copenhagen from a Copenhagen IP? So maybe they're more likely to be searching one of the restaurants or some of the ancillary revenue or options that you have at your facility. So here, what Bleak, well, Nobis or in the Bleak location, but they do this with all of their locations, even the one in Copenhagen, is if someone's coming locally to the website, they highlight their brunch or their restaurant. So instead of pushing the book now button or book a room on that guest, which is like unlikely to be booking a room, they cater their interest to learning more or booking a table. Uh, and here we see two examples. Another great use case for this doesn't have to be based on the IP. You can actually, um, what I see some clients doing is once the booking is confirmed, because we can also be in the confirmation page, actually we have to be in the confirmation page with the script so we can track bookings and success of all the messages. But what they do is they say, thank you for your booking. Have you considered booking um, a or a table at our restaurant, for example, it's one of the best in the city. So then it's kind of this two birds with one stone. Uh, so then you're, you're not only getting the, table, the hotel reservation, but also the restaurant recommendation uh, or the table booking. So now we move on into uh, the booking engine step. I'm going to slowly transition, but here the Ted does a really great job of highlighting um, specific offers that they have around uh, different length of stays. This, this works really well because we see really big jumps in the length of stay searched versus the length of stay booked as well. Um, but then Elite takes it one step further and this is where personalization uh, can really take another, can really be pushed to another limit because all booking engines are limited to um, 
only showing you what's available depending on the number of adults and the length of time that you're searching and the dates that you're searching for. So length of stay plays a really big role here, and, and this is what we recommend to all our clients. If you have a long stay offer, and that long stay offer is like stay three nights and get 25% off, if someone hasn't gone to your special offers page or read very little about your, your property, uh, they don't know that if, they, if they're doing a two night search that maybe the three night option is available. So what we do with a lead is say, this is one example. I like when I work with my clients, I say, did you know, question mark. But here they go, usually less words because it's a smaller message, but they go extend your stay to three nights and get 25% uh, discount. And then the call to action is extend your stay. So they're taking a two night search, which you can't see in the booking engine, but trying to push that guest out for three nights. And, and they're just highlighting something that might be a little bit more relevant to them if they have that flexibility in time. Another great, um, apart from all the messaging types and you're seeing a lot of like extend your stay, which typically would take them back to search their dates, the start planning will typically take you into the booking engine. Now one thing that we've started to do because there's been a lot of demand from clients is to give different call to actions. So of course you can personalize the way you present all the content and who you present it to, but you can actually customize it all the way down to the call to action. So if there's no availability in your booking engine and you might close it out, um, so we have a very big luxury client um, and one thing that they do in their booking engine is during specific times they close out all the availability and they cr try and create interest through the use of calling in or emailing in when there's um, that availability is closed and then they create this like when you call in what they do is they say ah yes we found something just for you and then they can really um, get a, a nice uh, booking revenue for that so here's one example uh, first hotels when when there's no availability you can click to call that's connected on mobile to your whatsapp or whatever um, connection you have there or your main calling you can also click to email and then that will open up your gmail and allow you to email in uh, in case you want to do that nordic choice or now known as strawberry is really going full throttle into personalization. They just, had, uh, they just hired someone um, who is the head of personalization. Uh, she comes from Lothansa and Qatar Airways, if I'm not mistaken. Airlines have always been traditionally, you know, you, you kind of jump around between the two, but they're quite innovative in that space. Uh, and I think hotels have a lot to learn. So one thing that they're doing is they're personalizing a lot of the content based on how the user is behaving and when they're searching. One thing that I always see hotels do is like, maybe I'm coming now to your website, but I'm actually more interested in Christmas or the Geneva car show, for example. But then when I arrive on your website, you're telling me about your summer offer and that's not at all applicable to my stay dates, you know? So that, that information tends to be a little bit well, overwhelming uh, or useless. In this case, what they do is say, did you know that your search qualifies for our dine and stay offer? This is a really great way of moving someone from just booking the room to booking a package. And then one of the other things that we've done with personalization just to complement it is to reassure based on price because your user will typically make a decision for two different reasons. Um, and that's, is this the right hotel for me? So reviews are amazing at that. And then is this uh, the price or am I getting the best price? And a price comparison is a really great way of doing that on top of the personalization. If you want to, if price comparison is something that interests you, one of the, the benefits of, well, this price comparison that doesn't exist in the industry is that you have the possibility of price matching. So this allows you to personalize the price only when the OTAs are undercutting you. So they can't see this um, because their bots don't pick it up. And what, the, what happens here is you can see in Bank Hotel that their price was 210 for the dates. Uh, Hotels.com is 199. In a normal situation, the price, the Hotels.com wouldn't appear. It would go into a disparities report for you and only Expedia and Booking would appear. If you have a fourth preferred OTA, then it would replace Hotels.com. What happens here is that because they have a real-time price match, you can actually adjust depending on the range and disparity what offer you want to present. So it doesn't have to be a 10 because maybe you're cannibalizing your ADR by too much on a 1% OTA difference. But here um, you can say, if the OTA is undercutting me by 1 to 2%, I want to offer a 2% discount. If it's 3 to 4, I, I want to offer a 4. So you can keep the ranges. You have all the control. 
uh, and, and it works really well. When we did this, there was a 9% 9 9 of users who were offered a price match made the booking. So we can assume that if they had gone to the OTAs, they would have booked there. As an extension of some of the work that Strawberry is doing, they do a lot of A-B testing. And this is really nice because, of course, you're like, oh, well, a personalized experience is nice, but does it actually work? And, and how well does it work? So within our platform, um, they have the option, or you have the option, to A-B test everything or A-B-C test everything. So an A-B test would be something like this, the same website without, without personalization, meaning this uh, double points campaign or not showing the points campaign. One thing we saw in the last month was that there was a 22.6% uplift in total conversion uh, when they presented the offer with a countdown clock, which is really nice for urgency. Um, but an ABC campaign would be showing that message without the countdown clock, a second variant with the countdown clock, and then comparing it versus showing nothing. And then you can really analyze how your users behave. Uh, so it's really fun. If, if you want to make sure that something's working well, uh, this is a great way of doing that. Um, she told me a really, she gave me a really good example, uh, which was a bit of a learning. It's really nice once you meet someone and you actually learn a little bit more after you've been doing this for six years. But she said, uh, it's like um, you know, when you're watching TV and you see a commercial and you don't like the commercial, uh, maybe you switch the channel, but you don't throw out the TV. And this is what personalization is like. You should do personalization, but maybe if you don't see the improvement that you want, it's your campaign that's not working. So you have to change it up. Maybe it's the discount that you're providing. Maybe, maybe it's the wording. Uh, so they play around with this a lot. So they're not throwing out the TV. There's a lot of other ways to, to personalize the experience. If you tend to have a lot of group searches, Mininger does a really great job. So they do a lot of custom messaging. The Angleterre does a lot of stuff with their connecting rooms. Um, I'm coming back to Copenhagen with my kid. If I had someone to take care of him, I would put him in a connecting room with them. Um, but this is really great. So when they see someone searching with two adults and maybe two children in one, in one room, what they do is they recommend uh, considering booking two rooms that are connecting, and they get 50% off on the second room. Apart from, and I wanted to include as many um, Danish examples, so I, I just threw this one in. I didn't share it yesterday, but Comwell does a really good job of personalization. Um, they, they've been doing this for quite some time, but a really good, obvious way of personalizing the experience is if someone's not logged in, you can encourage them to sign up to your loyalty program so that, especially now with first party data becoming a priority, um, you expand that, uh, that marketing database and that loyalty base. If someone signed in, they don't see this message. So you can actually differentiate between the two as well. Another great way of collecting emails, if you want something in exchange for something, especially if you're doing discounts, instead of just giving away a discount, why not get something in return for it apart from a booking in case um, they don't actually complete the reservation? So here, uh, Nobis uses uh, artificial intelligence only to give discounts to people who have a low likelihood of completing a reservation. This is super cool. It works incredibly. I, and I, I don't mean it. Like These are the results. And every client who uses it has not canceled. Uh, so. One thing that we have the ability to do, because we have over 20,000 hotels, very similar to Netflix, we're analyzing a lot of different touch points, such as what has this user done before arriving on the website? Uh, have they been in one of your competitor's hotels? Have they been here before? Uh, how much time have they spent on the page? How far have they scrolled? How many clicks have they made on the first, second, third, fourth visit in the competitor's hotel? How did they do that? Um, how many times have they searched their dates? How many times have they come back? So we're analyzing those first two steps. Then we're also processing all the information that you're presenting to them in the price comparison, disparities, all these different factors. And then we API external data into the equation as well. And then we assign a score to every single user on your website from 0 to 100. And then depending on the likelihood, so if someone has a low likelihood, that's a subjective number. So I would say it's 0 to 40. You can say it's 0 to 50 or 0 to 30. You can play around with that spectrum. We don't control anything. We just give you the tools to do it. Um, they do 0 to 40. And they don't give discounts unless you have a, likely, a low likelihood to book. So this is really interesting because instead of giving away a discount to everybody on your website, some people, like 
at Hotel Saunders, they love that property and they will always come back. So running a discount there on the entire website wouldn't make sense because they have some people who are always booking there. So then they would, they would be cannibalizing their ADR again with, because, well, that user was going to book anyway. So in this case, what Nobis does, both here in Copenhagen and for a lot of their properties, is they give a discount. It can be 15, it can be 10. You can actually A-B test the discounts as well. Um, and free breakfast only if you have a low likelihood. And I think this is a month of results, 102% uplift in conversion within the targeted group. Pretty insane. Uh, and a lot of new emails collected. The Thief in Oslo with Nordic Hotels and Resorts, and Nordic Hotels and Resorts are going um, quite heavy on this as well, uh, just because they're seeing the benefits, and now one of their goals is to get more guest-centric, is kind of the new, personalization's always been a word, but uh, the guest-centric approach is now becoming a thing. Uh, they've done also really well. They do a 15% off as well for their low intent traffic, 24.7% uplift in conversion. Here I actually added the promotional spend just because the thief has been doing that for a really long time. This is more, this is newer. And we look at promotional spend because if they had given that 15% off to all their bookings during the period of time that we ran uh, the AI, then they actually would have spent an extra 26,000 euros. So by not giving that discount to everybody, they saved that and then they generated 30,000 from that campaign in a month and, and influenced 40 plus bookings. If you have high intent users, these are the other people on the spectrum, these are people who are more likely to book. In this case, the mentality changes because here you're moving away from convincing them that they should be booking with you and instead moving towards what type of room they should be booking with you. So here, you can actually upsell guests in real time without spamming them with all of your different offers. You can only say, hey, why don't you check out our suite? We will give you 10% off, or however you want to highlight that, or include a four-course dinner with your suite as soon as you click. Um, and that's only shown to people with a higher likelihood. Again, a subjective number. I say it's 80 to 99, uh, but you can play around with that. This is uh, new. We do a lot of innovation, as you see. So personalization, we've been doing for a really long time. We've gone into AI now. That works really well. Uh, hotels are, are, there's many hotels already using it. Uh, and one of the new things that we're looking at is personalizing the perks. Perks and benefits at your property, I mean, it's, it's very hard to come up with any more. You've probably kind of exaggerated all of them. Uh, so bringing up new benefits uh, has been a bit difficult. So what we've done is now you can personalize the benefits that you show, but it can include insurance. Americans are going crazy for this. I don't know if you guys have checked your stats, but in eight days that Nobis Copenhagen, which is the only property in Copenhagen at the moment testing this, look, in nine days, you guys should check your American bookings because the competition for America from a total conversion standpoint from last Monday until today has dropped by 30.9%. They took 14, no, 18 bookings from the US market just this week, which is pretty incredible. Uh, the uplift versus the previous period has been almost 50% on US conversion. Americans can't afford insurance. When you can offer that as a benefit as part of your property, and I asked them to change the message. Today I emailed them, I said, hey, why don't you say, unlike our competition, we offer insurance, book with us. So we're going to be changing that message. I'm sure it's going, to, uh, it's going to jump. So this is a part of the Hotels Network now, too. It's called Safe Direct. And with no work from your side, it's one euro per person per day. I think the ROI on this is like 25 times in nine days. It's pretty incredible. So why insurance? It's a big business in the US airlines, 3.7 billion at the moment. Now when you book, you can add insurance for 30 bucks or something like that with all of your bookings. Not everyone goes for it, but when you're offering as part of your package, a lot of people, apart from also having it with their credit cards and uh, with their work, that extra comfort and that stress-freeness to the booking really goes a long way. Right now we're seeing for the American traffic, it works really well. Another source that we're seeing really well in the tests that we've done is families. Uh, so if you're traveling as a family, maybe you like that extra assistance. So 
huge, huge numbers here. I mean, their chart. I mean, the average is actually 17. I think I saw in Vueling when I was booking my flights, it was 30. Uh, but taking like a, a page from the airlines, uh, this is something to look out for. So. I talked a lot about how other hotels are doing personalization, but how can you do this? We have a whole platform where you choose the different formats. We have all of your brand guidelines built into it, so you don't have to go and change the colors. Everything is pre-formatted. Again, you just go choose the format. Everything adjusts to your branding, and then you can uh, you choose who you want to show the message to, and then it, it uh, pops up. You can even embed it directly into your website if you if you think that pop-ups don't work. But I've done a lot of testing over the years. Putting something into your website amongst all the other information that you have doesn't work. Having it appear, but when it's personalized, is, is much more productive. So Salesforce is uh, going heavy on personalization as well for many different aspects. But from the research that they've done, it, they're saying 75% of businesses Business buyers expect the companies they buy from to provide a personalized experience, anticipate their needs, uh, and provide relevant suggestions. And this is relating to everything. So one thing we're seeing with personalization on the hospita hospitality side is from the moment you start, there's about a 19% uplift in conversion. You can actually personalize the whole journey and decide how you want everything to work. We can also help you with that. And on the AI side, it's about an 8% difference. The safe direct side, I mean, in Copenhagen, the results are incredible. I'm going to follow this uh, for a while. We are actually booked the call with Nobis, so they're going to expand it to other markets, not the local one. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think it'll be really interesting to see. So what we're trying to do at the Hotels Network is move from viewing all users as being the same, because when they arrive at your hotel, they are not the same, um, and personalizing that to, to make sure that every user is different and they're expecting something different. So. How many people know about the Hotels Network now? <laughs> cool. Amazing. Great. Thank you. Uh, and I'll